the only time I would feel like at peace or okay with myself, like literally was when I was asleep. Let's just pretend I didn't already enter, place the camera, walk back out, and then re-enter. It's all for you. It's all for you, baby. Hi, how are you? Um, welcome back to my channel. It's a gorgeous, cloudy morning in London after all of the boiling hot days we've had. I'm grateful <laughs> for the clouds. Uh, I've just been to the gym. I went to a yin yoga class this morning, which is like a really slow and meditative yoga. Usually I'll do like vinyasa yoga. And so this one was really still. And like the teacher was like, don't move. Notice when you want to twitch. And I'm there like twitching, like twitch a sudden, just like, oh, this is uncomfortable, this is uncomfortable. And she's like, let your jaw go floppy. I'm like, oh, it was really hard. It was so much harder than like holding a downward dog to a twisted plank to all this stuff. It was so hard to just chill out. Um, but it was really good, like it was really good. Um, and it's a nice reminder to pause and to just, uh, just pause, to literally just pause and really feel it, to stop what you're doing and just be still. And know that God is good. Like, I really believe that, but in my life, how much do I practice that? So I'm gonna book a load more yin yoga classes. I know that sounds really uh, enlightened and bougie and stuff, but you know, this stuff exists for a reason. I think I need to learn how to pause and relax. Like it shouldn't be that hard to be still <laughs> for three minutes. I'm gonna also be putting out these flowers. Uh, I love having fresh flowers in my home. I really try to prioritize stuff that I like, like financially and time-wise, because I think that's a great way to practice self-love is like doing things for yourself that are beautiful, that you enjoy, just things that make you smile. So for me, I love flowers. Flowers really make me smile. So I make sure that I get myself some so that the black can be beautiful. Um, but yeah, I don't buy the most expensive at the moment. If I could, I would. <laughs> and I hope to be able to one day, but I literally just get the five pound bunches. Um, would these be one pound fifty in Aldi? Yes, but let's not talk about that. Please don't expect any crazy arrangements here. I tend to do the least with this. And I know that there's a lot more that you can do. I just do the bare minimum um, in order to keep them alive for kind of as long as possible. Um, so the main thing that my mum taught me growing up was that always remove the any leaves or any dead plant material that is gonna be below the waterline. Um, so I'm just kind of picking stuff up and just picking off any leaves that will be below the waterline of the vase um, because that will just rot and kill the flowers sooner. So yeah, if the water's going murky a lot, then you might want to double check. There's not dead weight below the waterline. And the other thing that I do, I mean, I'm pretty sure it says this on instructions whenever you get flowers, but the other thing that I do is I just cut uh, about an inch or two off the bottom of the, of the stems um, just so that it's fresh and can absorb water. The best way to do that actually is to cut it under running water so then you don't get any like air bubbles in the stems and they just, yeah, they're much healthier when you do that but it's tricky and a lot of effort so I'm just going to do it this way. What I wanted to talk to, talk about or like babble on about in this video <laughs> it's just life and gratitude um I started doing a gratitude practice a while ago I'd say it was like a few years ago I noticed that I'd got into like this mental um negative state where I'd wake up and I would literally why are these not these scissors are terrible I got like garden scissors so that they'd be a better cut but this is so bad anyway I noticed that I would wake up and the first thing I would think would just be, I would always be annoyed at myself. Like I would wake up and I would already be mad at myself for not having done enough. Can you imagine, you wake up and just like, oh, I haven't done this, I haven't done this. I did that, I shouldn't have said that, I shouldn't have done that, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, this sucks. Cause it's like the only time I would feel like at peace or okay with myself, like literally was when I was asleep. So I'd love being able to go to sleep because I'd be like, oh, finally, stress-free. And I'd wake up in the morning and I'd be like beating myself up all day. 
Um, and so I think the first thing I did was that I forced myself, when I realised this and like the, the cycle of misery, I'm just going to change these. These are terrible. This is the first time I've used these to cut flowers and they suck. So that'd be obvious. Okay, these should work a little bit better. Yeah, so I kind of got to the place where I was like, okay, I'm banning myself from saying a bad thing as my first words of the day. In my head, mind you. So I'd wake up and I'd be like, oh, you're running late for this, you haven't done this, blah, blah, blah. So I was like, the first thing I'm going to say is thank you. That will be the first word, I think, every single morning when I wake up. I'll just be like, thank you that I'm alive. Thank you for another breath. Thank you, Lord. And I made myself start the day giving thanks um and that that helped that genuinely helped quite a bit like i remember just feeling a bit better about everything and then i think maybe like a month or two after that this was back in like i don't know 2019 i think can't really remember um but i started a gratitude journal so i just got a little notebook nothing complicated i'd write the day's dates the day the month the year um and i would oh missed one just a little bit below waterline. I'd write the date and then I would write the word gratitude. So I'd write gratitude and I would just list stuff I'm grateful for. Um, so list all the things that I'm grateful for, which could be anything. Um, and at first, I, you know, I'd be sitting there like thinking for like a minute. It gets so easy. <laughs> Suddenly it's like, I'm really grateful I'm alive. I'm really grateful my sisters are alive. I'm really grateful my brothers are, you know, just Things I'm grateful for, um, I'd be grateful for my coffee, for a sunny day. Sometimes I'd be grateful for the rain that was pretty to look at and for shelter from the rain. And I'll just list all the stuff I'm grateful for. And when I tell you, it just makes you feel happy. <laughs> Suddenly you're like, there is so much to be grateful for. There is so much good and it makes you feel so happy. So it's kind of like an instant way to feel happy. Like if you do it, no matter what is going on in your life, you'll feel a little bit better. I know that's a big statement to say because I know pretty tragic things go on in people's lives. But yeah, it's proven <laughs> that gratitude makes you happier and improves your mood. Um, so I would do that. Ta-da! One done. <laughs> and then the next heading I would do then, so this is just on like a little A4 page, no big diary, it can be bullet point, messy handwriting, it doesn't matter, I'm not really gonna read it back necessarily, it's just for me. Um, and the next thing that I would do is that I would uh, write down testimonies. So things I've specifically prayed for and asked God for. Now, initially, this was a little bit hard because it was almost like I couldn't remember what I prayed for. But say if I prayed for like, I don't know, a parking spot or healing or a new job, you know, I would write that down as an answered prayer. And um, then the next heading I would do would be prayer points. So then I would write down the things that I'm praying for at the moment. Now, when I tell you, literally like a week into this, so I would, this takes about 10 minutes, so I just do it every morning. It doesn't take long. It, was, it took about 10 minutes. But the, most, it, the most discipline it takes is having a spare 10 minutes, creating that spare 10 minutes in the morning to do it. So waking up early to do it. I say spare. There's no such thing as spare. No one ever accidentally does anything. You have to decide to do it and make time for it. So just making that decision to give 10 minutes towards this was the hardest part. Actually doing it is really easy. It's one of those things like, if you just instead of waiting to feel motivated you have to actually just do something and as you do it you'll find that you start to feel motivated and it's pretty easy so as long as i could get over that hurdle in the morning it was great it would only take like 10 minutes and i remember oh look at this baby she's dead the stem is broken uh do you know what i'm gonna be stingy and i'm gonna put her in anyway and just watch her die slowly anyway I guess that's what we do with all of these flowers. Anyway, so it was really good. It was really helpful. Love it. Highly recommend it. But what I found was that the um, the testimony bit got wild because obviously I was writing down my prayers. So then when I would look, when I would be stuck on what what have I prayed for that God has answered, I would flick back through my prayer points and I would just see stuff that I forgot I'd prayed for, and I'm like, oh. God really did answer that prayer. I literally, that, that happened. And it was just amazing to the point where sometimes it would make me run over time. So I'd just be sat there in awe, like with this like existential, not existential crisis, but just thinking, oh my God, is, is God real? <laughs> and obviously I'm a Christian, I believe in God. But like, you know that moment where you're like, wait, 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 wait. Did God genuinely just hear my prayer and answer it? Like, what? what like that is wild um and then that would just increase my sense of gratitude and peace and the sense of feeling loved 
that God loves me and is listening to my problems. Like, I still, even when I say that, I still can hardly fathom for, like, yeah, that's just wild. Let's not, I'm not going to talk about that because I'll just, you'll see me start to, like, compute. Um, but I just wanted to talk about that and encourage you, if you're not practicing gratitude, oh my gosh, are these dying already? If you're not practicing gratitude, to give it a go, like, genuinely try it. I think, like, for me, it's one of the reasons why I love, um, yeah, I, I just think it helps in every situation because it changes your mindset as well. Like, I've always naturally been an optimistic person. And honestly, it wasn't until I got around a pessimistic person and tried to, not to blame that person at all, but, but you know, as you meet people and spend time with different people and you, you see that someone can see the glasses half empty and when they present that in a really intelligent way, you can start to imitate that, right? And so a glass that you would have seen as being half full and like, oh my gosh, there's water and a glass, what? We're so lucky. Suddenly you're like, oh, that's really empty and there's not enough and how can their glass is more full? And they've actually got a nicer glass and suddenly you learn how to pick up on the negatives. And so I learned that just as life teaches you. And then I remember what, one time spending time with someone who was really positive and really ever complained. And I was the complaining one. I was the pessimistic one. I remember being like, no, 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 no. This never used to be me. And so through this process of gratitude and, and journaling, um, I've, I've been able to somewhat train myself. And I'm still in that process because habits are hard to break once formed. But train myself to see the glasses half full. And... And so now when I get around people who are more pessimistic, I really try to guard my mindset and my energy and just be really aware because I truly believe that optimism can be learned. I truly believe that pessimism can be learned. I don't think it's just who you innately are. We love to adopt things as our identity. I don't know why. We tend to just grab stuff and be like, that's who I am. Um, but you really do get to choose who you are and who you become. <laughs> you really do. You can be an optimist or you can be a pessimist. Just learn to do either one. In the same way as you can be, um, you can be a retail assistant or you can be a shoplifter. Just choose what you do. <laughs> um, so yeah, I really not that I'm calling pessimists shoplifters, but I I truly believe that being optimistic. Let me carry on doing this because otherwise these babies will die. Roses are oh, my favorite flowers they're just so gorgeous i love flowers i just how can this be possible how can something okay this one isn't even perfect but it's perfect in its imperfection let me show you up close how can something be this gorgeous like look at it look at that hang on let me just <laughs> so funny usually people do this with like lipsticks i'm doing this with a rose but look at that look at that look how delicate those pet petals are they're so delicate and the fact that, that is one rose out of like gazillions of roses that have ever existed and it's just formed it's so delicate and soft and it smells gorgeous and it's just so amazing how amazing are roses how amazing are flowers like they're so pretty like what is the point in something being this cute why it just seems unfunctional but it's just oh i'm so grateful anyway i have come to believe that optimism makes life better not just in your perspective and how you feel about what's happening to you, but I believe it quite literally makes better things happen to you. <laughs> the reason I believe that is not just with this kind of stuff I've been reading about, like energies and all this zada zada, you know, enlightening stuff. But I just think practically, <laughs> practically speaking, when you're smiling and in a good mood, you attract people towards you. Um, you bring out that reaction in them. So if you go to the shopkeeper and you smile because you've been thinking of good stuff and you're happy or you frown, that tends to determine how they respond to you. Um, and so, yeah, I think that there's a practical element to practicing gratitude and optimism. So always looking for the good that you can see in any situation that then makes more good things happen to you. I believe that on a practical level in terms of like people just want to be around optimistic people and also on an energetic level. I really do think that you attract the kind of vibes that you put out. Um, so, yeah, just to encourage you guys, like really... It's, it's helping me it helps me it's kind of like you're in a situation either way right so you can either feel worse in that situation or you can feel better within that situation do you know what i mean like you can either 
do something that might help change the situation or you could not do that thing that might help change the situation. And I'm not trying to belittle people's situations. I know that people have like genuinely, you know, I work as a doctor. I know that life is, yeah, things can suck. Things can be genuinely tragic. But I still believe that we get the element of choice in how we perceive what we choose to focus on, whether we choose to see the light or the negative. I even see that on YouTube, you know, like sometimes I'll be watching, um, you know, the people I'm subscribed to and the people I follow, and you 100% get the vibe of like the YouTubers who like um, always respond to negativity and will be like speaking to their haters and blah, blah, blah. And you look at the comments and you're like, there are so many more lovers than haters in your comments, like, but you're responding to their neg energy. And so I'm watching this video and I'm just feeling negative energy and I'm like, I, and I get it because it's hurtful when someone leaves a negative comment and it's it's hurtful um, when you invite someone into your life and bad stuff happens and we as humans have can have the natural tendency to see that negativity and feel it more, you know, you can get a hundred good comments and one bad comment and you can zone in on that and it really hurts. But when you do allow yourself to zone in on something, I, I genuinely believe it attracts more of that. Like, I, I truly believe that. Um, I think that, yeah, all you guys have always been so nice. So nice and so kind to me. And I'm so grateful. I genuinely believe that is because of God's grace and just drawing really kind people to my channel. I'm so grateful for you guys. Um, but there was something I saw on Lily Singh's channel back in the day. Or I think it was in her book, How to Be a Boss, that I read back in the day. And she essentially says, like, um, she forces herself to respond to, when she sees a negative comment that she wants to, like, argue and fight about and get in her head about, she forces herself to respond to every single good comment that there's been first before the negative comment. And by the time she's gone through, I think she said this at least, or maybe I've, like, exaggerated this, maybe she, like, challenges herself mentally to do it. I don't know if she actually responds to every single positive comment. But she's like, by the time she's meant, she's read all the positive comments and gone through all the love she doesn't have the energy for the negative one she's actually pretty tired and pretty you know peopled out um and so yeah she said that that's a really good way like why would you reward someone with attention for being negative towards you um and i just found that really interesting and also really practically helpful um and it's something that i do um a lot on the, well i don't <laughs> I honestly, uh, I, I'm just blessed. Like, you guys are always so kind and loving towards me. And even in the way you say things, I really appreciate how you consider my feelings and, and my sensitivity. You're always just really kind, and I super appreciate that. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to encourage you that, like, life be lifing. Life be lifing. When I tell you, I wish I could tell you all the drama and nonsense that has gone on in my life over the last year. But, you know, you'll, you'll rarely ever see me talk about other people on this channel. Um, I don't think you will ever see me talk about relationships and stuff like that specifically on this channel just because that's not for me I, I, I do enjoy I like sharing my life but I'm never going to force a friend or someone I know to, to share their life online um, so yeah if you don't see me out with friends um, it's because you know I just not post it um, why did I start saying that Ooh. anywho camera's overheating this looks terrible this looks so bad. I was thinking of doing, you know when they like tape, tape it so that they can put one in each section. Should I try that just for you guys and see if it looks any better? Let me, hmm, mm, mm. No, I don't think I'll have enough. I think I'm just gonna cut them all shorter. That's it, it's just too long, it's too tall. Oh, more like hack it. Anyway, I hope that that little chat has been interesting, oh that's way too short, has been interesting or helpful or yeah, just anything to you. Like if you ever see that I'm positive or optimistic or whatever it is, just know that at some point in my life when I was a child, it may have been just, oh that's just the way I am or the way I was raised. But as an adult, it has been wildly intentional. I protect my energy Fiercely, fiercely. Now I'm like a chat. Like, look at me. I've just talked for 20 minutes straight with no one 
Is this 20 minutes? 15 minutes with no one interrupting me. Like, I love a chat. I love to meet people. I'm always chatting, chatting, chatting. But when I tell you, when I sense now that I am being impacted by someone's, by, by negativity in a way that I am not yet strong enough to resist or, um, or understand or respond to well, I leave. I duck out. I'm like, oh, I can't handle it. I don't, I don't. I, I fiercely protect my energy. Like, my mum used to say this to me growing up and, and I never understood it as a child. But now as an adult, I get it because we're quite similar. We're both quite sensitive and, you know, people who naturally give a lot. We love to make other people happy. She would always tell me to guard my heart and I never understood it. It would be like when a sibling upset me and I'd be crying. She'd be like, Sarah, you need to guard your heart, guard your heart. And I'm there like six, like, what does that mean? Just punish him, just punish my brother for what he did to me. She'd be like, guard your heart, guard your heart. And I think that's just so true that you have to, especially as an adult, I've learned I have to guard my heart, that not everyone is gonna speak things to me that are good for my heart. Not because they're evil, but because they just, they don't know how. Like we're all working on ourselves and growing, well, we're all human and flawed, not everyone's working on themselves, but we, we, we all make mistakes. And so it doesn't have to be that someone's intentionally trying to drag you down or trying to make you depressed or trying to bum you out. But that just might be where they're at at the moment and that just might be the result of the way they speak at the moment and the things that they choose to focus on. And it's up to you, to, it's up to me, i found, to guard my heart. Like God has given me that responsibility. Um, so that naive um, joy that I have, like genuinely, people have told me, oh, you're, people have told me I'm too nice, like so many times, which is funny because I never thought I was, but like that ability to um, love generously and kindly and be naive and genuinely believe that the best is going to happen, it's gorgeous, but you gotta protect it, because otherwise life will take it. Life will just take it. <laughs> like, yeah, so you have to intentionally protect it, and that's something I've been learning over the last year, and sometimes protecting your peace and your space, like literal physical space, takes an element of boldness and fearlessness that is beyond anything you might think you're capable of. I've had wild experiences this year where I've had to quite literally protect my physical space um, and I, I honestly didn't know I was capable of being that um, of, of being that of having that firm boundaries but I am I can do it and I and I got through that situation that required that and I'm really grateful that yeah that I had learned a li little bits that God had revealed to me little bits how important it is to protect your vulnerabilities to protect your heart and um, so that your heart can be strong enough to continue to love do you see what i mean and for me a big part of that has been gratitude intentionally choosing what i focus on and what i surround myself with anyway i've talked enough i've gone on enough um thanks for clicking on the video and tuning in um i don't know what i'm going to be posting and you guys know if you've been on this channel for more than five minutes you already know you already know what it is um so what i'm going to do is I need to tidy this place. It is a mess. This place is a mess. I know you might be thinking it's really not that messy, but I've just become really, I don't wanna say a clean freak, but like the floor is not clean. The floor is not hoovered and mopped. And so I'm gonna hoover and mop and wipe the sides and stuff and put these flowers out. But yeah, thanks for tuning in. Subscribe. Let me know your thoughts. I love you so much. Oh, I braided my hair, but I mean, you obviously know right now, but I braided my hair um, for the first time in like, a good four years, maybe even longer. Uh, maybe not longer, maybe like three years. <laughs> but it feels good. Oh, I've missed braids, why have I not done this? But yes, I haven't been able to sleep since I did them. Like I'm sleeping on my face right now, but oh my gosh. And, I, I, and it looks good too, I feel like an African queen. Okay, love you so much guys, bye. <laughs>